Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel, Grow Roots. This is late June, North Texas, zone 8A, and there's been some garden triumphs and garden fails, and I'll take you all through it. So, starting over here, uh, there's a mum border right here, and if you guys remember from May, these, these mums here had just gotten way overgrown. I cut them way, way down. And they are fleshing out just fine. I don't know if I'm going to keep these here. They're just a little bit too crazy for this border area. And this one kind of stays how I like it. <laughs> but, uh, and it's in full bloom. It's beautiful. If you remember, this one doesn't grow the way the others grow. And that's because my dogs like to pee here. So if you're looking for somewhat of a top of salt tolerant or urine tolerant, plant I guess mums kind of work it struggles a bit it does struggle but I mean it stays alive and now it's in bloom so it's beautiful and my dogs are peeing on it so <laughs> uh, let's start here this rudbeckia is all over the place kind of floppy and garden pests for sure uh, this area has a lot of aphids, but I also have a lot of ladybugs. See if I can find any. I have not done any pest control back here except for my desert rose plant that I'll show you. And that's because I don't want to lose that. But um, the Rudbeckia definitely has some plant leaf damage here. But you know what? Oh, here you go. Let's see if I can get these. These are one of the pests that I have. Uh, cucumber beetles so I've been taking them oh and they're flying there I've been taking them when I can putting it down and crushing it I don't know if I got it oh well but cucumber beetles like crazy this year but you know what the plants are still going and they're still blooming and I'm still happy and I think it still looks good so we're going for it for now is no pest control so far um, but the Rebecca looks great we've got some vinca that I planted from Baker's Creek Heirloom Seeds, grew them from seed. Here is the Limelight Hydrangea. And it is just starting to bloom. My Limelight Standard that's in the front garden, you can see that in its garden tour, in the garden tour I just published, it's, it's in bloom, like they're actual big blooms now. This guy is just starting, but can't wait to see this guy in his glory. Here I've got my, these are zinnias planted back here, California giant zinnias this time. This is the first time I've seen white in this um, multi-pack that I got. It's beautiful, I love the white. Loving it. And then there's an orange one. Some of these are getting older, I need to deadhead those. I've got some pink. I've got another rudbeckia. Um, here's my peony, and you guys can let me know this. I don't know what's normal for a peony or not. I just planted these in the fall, so obviously they're not blooming for me yet. Uh, but maybe they're getting sun scorched. You can see the, the tips of the leaves are turning brown, and then I'm getting some spotting and yellowing. I don't know if this is normal when it gets really really hot in texas we've had 100 degree days the last week at least we're beginning the texas heat and i hope this peony makes it i really do but um okay so going on through this garden area i've got some nepeta and yeah the nepetas got some damage mm. Some yellowing spots on the leaves. I don't know if it's aphids. I honestly don't see any insects on this plant. But one thing I do know, again, is I have cucumber beetles. And I also have those um, leaf hopper. They're grasshopper looking things. Katie dids, I think, is what they're called. I have tons of those in my garden. So perhaps that's what's going on. But I have a random zinnia that thought it was going to come up right next to the nepeta that I planted. More zinnias. There's the jasmine that's really actually growing well. 
here's more nepeta right here. Some of it is in flower right now, so let's take a look at the flowers. Not what I pictured when I was planting this. I wanted something like the cat's pajama nepeta from Proven Winners, and that's just not what this is turning out to be, though it's nice. But it's not doing well here, so if it dies, I'm going to probably try to pick up the cat's pajama nepeta from Proven Winners next year. Here's my Texas sage. This one's doing pretty well. I'll show you my other one isn't, but this one's doing fantastic. Here I've got this beautiful kind of coral color echinacea that my neighbor Aida gave me. These are, they kind of fade. The older blooms, I need to take them off probably, though you don't have to. And the new blooms are just super bright, beautiful, and lots of new blooms coming too. <laughs> Here is my little quick fire. No blooms, it's okay. And it's little, it's a baby, but I'm happy to have it. It seems to be doing just fine with the exception of no blooms, so okay. We've got the sunshine ligustrum, big guy. I keep having to trim it back so that my quick fire can still get sun. We've got some orange zinnias. Super beautiful. Some that are coming in. Okay, this next part of the garden I can barely get through now because it's so grown. Here's the Texas sage, my other Texas sage that is starting to yellow and defoliate. Ugh, it did this to me in the winter time and now it's doing it to me in the heat. And this is supposed to be a very heat tolerant, drought tolerant plant. So I don't know what's going on. It's bigger than the other one, but it's also struggling. So hmm. this is a, another milkweed. It was in bloom a bit ago, no longer in bloom, but still there and doing okay again no monarch butterflies but lots of butterfly activity has been around here and a lot of the butterfly activity is because of these guys look at this echinacea echinacea purpurea purple echinacea this stuff is at least four feet tall i'm five feet and it's almost as tall as i am so it might be four and a half feet at this point but these huge cone-shaped blooms are attracting pollinators everywhere. As a matter of fact, I'm bothering them right now. The bees are around the, I don't know if you could see that gray hair streak butterfly right there. I've also seen giant swallowtail butterflies. I've seen red admirals. I have seen, um, what other ones? Um, but... Anyway, this echinacea is a huge pollinator magnet. That and the black-eyed Susans. Oh, look, see? There we go. So pretty. He says, I'm not going to let you bother me. Beautiful. That is, the name is escaping me right now. That's the one that I have been able to raise. Uh, Gulf Fertillery, there we go. Gulf Fertillery butterfly. Bye, buddy. You want this cinea, don't you? Right here. You, I'm just not bothering you in any way. Not really, anyway. Anyway, huge pollinator magnets, the zinnias, the black-eyed Susan, and the echinacea. So, awesome experience there. The echinacea is even kind of mixing in with my cannas. So, here's my cannas. These guys are over five feet tall this year. Unfortunately, there's one bloom, but they're coming out of bloom for now. I need to cut all of these bloom heads off. It will reflush, no doubt, but just kind of coming out of bloom here. Um, my one purple bellvine to actually make it is right there. And so it might be about three feet tall now. It's doing pretty good in this particular location. So I'm hoping it will bloom later on this summer in these beautiful, beautiful purple blooms. So crossing fingers, that one survives. I can keep it alive. I hope I can keep it alive. Okay, trying to cross through the cannas and the echinacea, which are four to five feet tall and a bunch of pollinators. There's bees everywhere. Please don't sting me, bees. I'm not trying to hurt you. Okay. <laughs> 
here's a black-eyed Susan that has really, really struggled and been eaten, but is finally starting to bloom. Here's the back side of our water feature with all of the cannas. They're just going crazy this year. This is the Midnight Marvel Hibiscus about to bloom. Let's see. I saw a really big bloom. I think this is the most um, advanced bloom. It has not bloomed quite yet, but it is probably double the size of when I picked it up last year. It was just an itty bitty little plant last year in the fall when I got it, and it's going to explode in blooms any moment, so I am super excited about that. More zinnias. Uh, over here, oh, it actually is flowering. I was going to say, this is a lemon cucumber plant that uh, my friends gave me, Sue, um, and I didn't think it was going to make it. It hasn't really grown very well. That's the other plant over there. It's just not doing very well back here. But this one is actually in bloom, so we'll see if we can get some cucumbers yet. I had to make my way up and out of there. I kind of can't go through the other way, but I wanted to show you the pots that I had planted up here. So this one is my pink gomfrina and bunny tails. And wow, what a wow factor. Okay, the gomfrina that I planted in the front garden, you can see in my garden tour I just posted, it is itty bitty and these guys are huge. Now granted, I think there's at least four salmon pastel gomfrina plants planted here but they just exploded in these containers and then in the middle I planted bunny tail grass and it is this is I guess these are their blooms they're also little seeds on the bloom heads at some point but I have to say the bunny tail grass was doing fantastic until this last week of 100 degree heat and now you look, it's, it's dying. The foliage is dying off. I think the plant is done. Or maybe because I didn't, I didn't harvest the blooms, maybe that's why it's done. I guess that's possible. Either way, I think we're towards the end of our bunny tail grass because I'll show you the other bunny tail grass plants. The others are done, they're, they're done. But beautiful planter, gomfrina and bunny tail grass. Also this one, Black Eyed Susan with orange zinnias. Uh, here we go. So Black Eyed Susan and Bunny Tail Grass. Bunny Tail Grass, hmm, yep. 100 degree temperatures or just the fact that I didn't harvest them when they had their blooms. I don't know which. If you've grown it and you know, please comment and let me know. Is it the heat or is it because I didn't harvest and it thinks it's done because it, it went to seed? That's possible. <clears throat> More black eyed Susan. I'm I've got my rosemary that I'm training into like a double ball topiary. I kind of cut the growth off of here and I'm trying to make this into another ball. I gotta cut this back a little bit and trim it, but doing just fine. Blue pansies are about to go. They're just done with this heat. Expected. This is a citronella plant that I picked up and the reason it looks like this is we went on vacation and this wasn't hooked up to irrigation so I brought it inside and it just did not love its life inside even for just a week so it's back out but it's not happy with me. Alright so this guy, desert rose, adenium, it's in its peak, it's glorious, it's full of blooms. It's beautiful. Look at that. Just beautiful. I love this plant. So now you can see I've got strawberries growing below, but look, the strawberries are like draping over the branch. Look, I got it. We've been gone for a week, so I've got a ton of strawberries to pick. This being one of them. This one's good. Didn't get to that one in time. Oh dear. The squirrels can have it. That one's not ready. Okay, anyway, seascape strawberries. Fantastic strawberry plant. The quinaults are also good. The quinaults are over here, and it, they've actually grown a lot. The, just smaller, smaller strawberries there, see? You can see. So seascape's the way to go. Here's my basil. 
not doing that well. It's yellowing and shriveling and I don't know. I'm probably just going to cut that all the way back and see what happens. If it dies, that's okay. I've got my blue agave here growing pretty well. Some zinnias. Black-eyed Susans. Something that is exciting though is my balloon plant has finally started blooming and I've got lots more blooms to come but and it's kind of falling over on top of the black-eyed Susan which I really don't mind because that's gorgeous <laughs> I got a black-eyed Susan plant right there and then this is lemongrass more black-eyed Susans red zinnias which I love so pretty and my other pink gomfrina with bunny tail grass but wow look at it in the wind so awesome love this plant and i've got some strawberries right in there those are quinaults so they're smaller here's the echinacea that you can see from my patio here's the ferris wheel that i planted up with ripple jade doing fine. The California Sunset Bacavaria, I think. Um, they didn't love this spot necessarily at first, but I let them completely dry out and they, they really like life now. They're only getting really just rain when it rains. And we have had a little bit of a wet summer, raining maybe twice a week-ish thunderstorm. Oh wow, look at this. Oh my. Okay. This is interesting. <laughs> okay, so this is, I forget what these bot, are these bot flies? Oh, I think that's a bot fly. I think that's what that is. And it's eating a little tiny bumblebee. Oh my. The cycle of life. My front garden tour, guys, I caught a green anole that had caught a spider on film and was eating the spider during my front garden tour and now I've got a, I think what is a bot fly eating a bee. Cycle of life. <laughs> Poor bee. Okay. We have our um, trumpet vine, but it's a different word for it. I'll put it on the screen. Anyway, just planted these this spring. They are it's interesting this has always been this way with these four trellises this one doesn't grow quite as tall this is the tallest it is but it's got some room to grow so it's seriously from down on the ground this is at least seven feet up in the air that it's it was they were itty bitty they were just a couple feet three feet tall now this one's a little bit higher going progressively this way they are growing taller i don't know why that is this one's all the way up here oh sorry almost all the way to the top and then this one is to the top and then wrapped around so they are doing well not currently blooming but gorgeous and then oh look at this planter it you can't even tell what is what anymore okay so some of this is limelight hydrangea right here I had like a branch that had vertical branches coming up off of it and I just kind of put it horizontally into this planter with the branches sticking up this way and it it's rooting and leafing out just no buds which is totally fine I'm just letting this time it just needs to grow roots so that's why there's no flowers that's perfect that's exactly what I want this these are Chinese forget-me-nots just kind of coming out of bloom but again another true blue flower if you watch my front garden tour you'll see the blue of ovulus um, blew my mind blue of ovulus and blue days i have in my front garden tour and those are blue but these are awesome they're from seeds they cost it they were a quarter at dollar tree and these are cosmos reseeded well they came up in my other garden in the other part of my garden and I took them out because I didn't want them there and I just put them in this container so there's two orange cosmos um, there's also bachelor buttons from seed that's what this is but not flowering I don't know if it will but that's what that is 
more limelight coming out that way. And then this was my jasmine. There are two jasmine plants in here that I had to cut completely. They died down to the root in the winter time. And now it's growing and flowering. Look at that. Lots of blooms coming on this jasmine. So I want to get a really cool trellis, but I just haven't found what I want yet. So I just put, this is, uh, from our crepe myrtle that we took down, I kept some of the branches, and so I'm just kind of using that for it to grow up right now. And then here are the two other ones that I still haven't found a home for. I will, but it is flowering too. Look at that. It smells really good. I just wish it would have done this in early spring the way it's supposed to. Here is another limelight from a cutting. So awesome. I can't believe that I got this to root and um, something is eating it. It's probably the katydids. I've seen them everywhere. The katydids are the cucumber beetles. <laughs> I wanted to share the double up pink begonias from Proven Winners in this container. Absolutely spectacular. If I had known it was going to triple in size, I would have just put one plant in this container. This is two plants. I thought about taking one out and putting it somewhere, but eh. Let's just let it do its thing. And I will, if I find more of these next year, I'm going to pick up more of these and I'm gonna put them everywhere because they can do sun or they can do shade and they're just spectacular and beautiful. So I might mix these in with my front garden border with the storm cloud uh, super vena. Mm, that would be so pretty. But I love this container. It's my favorite, one of my favorites. I keep saying that with all of them. <laughs> Something that's not my favorite was the fuchsia this year. Here's that fuchsia. They're just kind of hanging on. And in the past I've gotten bigger hanging plant fuchsias and they have done better. But these, I missed my window for the hanging plant fuchsias and then they were all gone and then I just got little, little tiny plants. Thought I saved some money, but it would have been worth it to buy the hanging plant ones because these have just not done all that well. So fuchsia in these hanging planters starting as little plants in the Texas heat does not do well. Note to self. All right, we're going to move down to the side garden. Look at that woolly mess. Okay, so <laughs> let's just start here. Here is one of my Pinto Mix coleus that I have let bloom like crazy the blooms are getting crazy again oh there's a teeny tiny gray hair streak butterfly do you guys see it oh he was so cute he's on my arm okay he's gone wow uh i think i will go ahead and cut these blooms off they're getting a little crazy but i did like them they're purple and they're big like salvia almost but i'm gonna cut these off these are these are good to go i've got my amaryllis doing fine it's kind of going into this uh, baby gem boxwood. So this, maybe I planted them way too close together and I may figure that out at a different time, but for now, they're fine. Here's my other peony. This one has more shade and it it's smaller than my other peony, but it has less damage, if that makes sense. It doesn't have the browning of the leaves like my other one does. So now that I'm thinking of it, I'm pretty sure the, the browning of the leaves is sun scorch. The other one probably has too much sun. This one probably has just enough, but it is smaller. So, hmm. I've got volunteer canna lily. <laughs> but here's that gray hair streak butterfly again. He's waiting for me to leave so he can go back on the flower. He's so cute. They're everywhere this year. This, oh man, okay. So, y'all remember my impatient seeds that turned out to be tomato plants. And now they are taking over. You guys look at this. I put, I, they were too tall for this like three foot tomato trellis. So I made it go over and up here. And now it's way too tall for that. And that one plant, I've got tons of tomatoes on. So I'm gonna keep that plant. But the rest of them, it's like this is toppling over. You can see. I also, 
kind of want to remove this plant because it's blocking my view of the daylilies and this rose mallow that's in beautiful bloom right now and coleus and so I think I'm gonna take this out like the tomatoes but I think I'm gonna take keep that tomato plant for the tomatoes and take the rest of these out since they don't have as many and just be done but because most of these buds are not forming fruit except for that one plant who, which is I've got purple heart cuttings from my mother-in-law that are doing well there's my day lilies are absolutely beautiful I love the color I need to come in deadhead some of these like that just pull them off there we go there we go. here's my other coleus again I'm gonna cut these blooms off they're pretty much done anyway but this one struggles in the heat it has more Sun than any of my other coleus does so it's struggling a little bit this one if I can get to it outside of this tomato plant but look at this rose mallow again my neighbor Aida gave this to me and she this rose mallow just has tons of buds they seem to only last a day or two and then they fall one actually just fell and this plant now this I know I know this plant is eaten by the katydids because yesterday I came out here there were four katydids on it and they are just eating it like crazy but it doesn't seem to bother the plant it's still flowering it's still fine i'm gonna let it be for now all right so here's the other angle of the rose mallow another coleus another coleus and my one of my hydrangeas this one's the smallest but it does have a bloom and it still has problems with chlorosis i've done everything i know how to do chelated iron two different treatments soil acidifier <clears throat> so it just is what it is with this one in particular here's my big tomato plant tons of tomatoes I need to go and pick <laughs> and then it's growing up and oh, it's huge like if I put this thing all the way up it would probably be at least 10 feet tall so this one I'm, I will leave it it's just kind of going over a hydrangea, but this one and this one I'm going to take out. Going around, here's another one. This, is, this might be my biggest hydrangea. Again, I just planted these last year. And this one doesn't have any blooms, but it's also the biggest. So, you guys see these? Do you see these white petals? I'm going to show you where it's coming from, and this is just kind of cool. Look up. Look at these my neighbor's white crepe myrtle it has just grown completely over it does need to be trimmed because it's touching our roof but it has created a blanket of white snow do you see this this is all i call it white snow it's white petals but it looks like snow it looks pretty and yeah there speaking of i hope aida's okay with me doing this they have a sunflower patch you guys look at their sunflowers I hope they don't mind but we have a borrowed view of these beautiful gigantic mammoth sunflowers and it's just spectacular gotta love it all right back to the hydrangeas so one two three four five six my hope is that eventually this will be one big hydrangea hedge and I think it will just be spectacular but I did get blooms pink ones mostly Again, kind of telling me that the soil could be more acidic, although these were slightly bluish. And then this one, these two just do not have blooms back here. <clears throat> they have the most shade. I mean, look at this. <laughs> it's like dense shade back here. So um, that's a nice little view. If it hadn't been for the woolly tomatoes, but. This is pretty much it, guys. Thank you for watching. I hope you have a fantastic day. Don't forget to like and comment and subscribe. And thank you guys so much. Bye-bye.